looked just like them. It was great. Not again. Was, yeah, and they actually got Hurt to be yeah, in the movie. Do you want to do you want to hear something interesting about John Hurt? Go I worked on a picture with him called Jay Mansfield's car. And nice. so this was early in, I think this is maybe 2011. This is when I was just kind of figuring out what the, so actually, so I, all right, I, I was, I was getting established in the industry. I was, I was taking a lot of really good commercial gigs and I got a call from a casting agency. They liked me when I was an extra and they're like, Hey, we got a job. It's like 23 days. That's it. But it's a Billy Bob Thornton movie. He's directing it. And in this movie is going to be John Hurt, Robert Duvall, Ray Stevenson, Kevin Bacon, uh, Francis, Francis, uh, O'Connor, uh, really stacked cat. Yeah, and so seriously. I, they're like, do you want to be a stand-in for Ray Stevenson? So I said, sure. Like, I, I would love that. And, I, you know, I actually lost money working on it, but you're on the set with these amazing actors, and you get to be there, listen yeah. to everything. <laughs> but, so what happened was they didn't really want to bring in new people. So I was a stand-in for Ray Stevenson, who's 6'3", my height. And then sometimes right. I had – one time I had to stand in for John Hurt, and – he was about you know five nine, incredibly friendly man. Yeah, not a big man. Um, and you yeah. know, stand-ins on set, you just kind of shut up and you watch. You're not really talking to people unless they like talk to you, you know. But he was always real pleasant. Yeah. But I had to stand in for him one time, and I gotta tell you, man, I got I got my quads, my calves, my uh, <laughs> hamstrings just from duck from bending to be that height. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, but no, no, I, I've I've stood in for John Hurt, man. It's kind of cool. That is kind of cool, man. Winston from 1984, you know, the cage with the rats on his yeah. face. That was. Oof. I just, uh, I don't know. It was pretty it was a friendly, friendly fella. It was so hot out. That's all I remember. But I, I had to like, so at first I was kind of squatting, but then I just put my legs out as far as I could to, to shrink down. <laughs> I learned that from a, a crafty stand in. And what was, and what happened in that scene, man? Did you have to uh, witness carnage that day? They were, or, they were or looking what? inside of Jay Mansfield's car. Yeah, nice. So was, I think it was him. It was Robert. It was either I think it was him, Robert Duvall, and uh, one of the kids from True Blood. Oh, and I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look out for that scene. Yeah, that and movie. so <laughs> but like yeah, that, that whole film, man, just standing in and like, but it's cool. I was just around all those people, like you know, Billy Bob's like, hey Mark, go hit your mark. And you're like, oh man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a super cool experience, and it's called Jay Mansell's Car, and. The, the movie has some wonderful scenes, and I, I really think it's worth hunting out. It didn't get a big distribution, but I, I love the movie. But, yeah, so I went totally off off guard, but I loved um, that whole thing. <laughs> now, Enjoy yourself. Why? Yeah. Okay. People lately, I've been hearing people make fun of self-destruct mechanisms. Yes. What are your thoughts? Lost in space. Season what two. are your thoughts on self-destruct mechanism? Oh, didn't they say that? They're like, why would we put a self-destruct mechanism it's on our – she specifically said that. Why would you want to blow up your own ship? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Norbert, yes. quick question. Uh, you want to ask me a question? You're sure. in that world, and you have to deal with that family. Would you like them? I mean, just the most know-it-all people. Every time I suggest something, you know, I would like to go out tonight and have sushi. Well, actually, you know, sushi is made from animals that were farmed to extinction by... Shut the hell up! <laughs> it's... it's, it's it's why Penny is the best one, man, because she doesn't know anything. Yeah. She just wants to just go and just have fun. And the rest of them are just know-it-all bastards. They're, it's like a, a Fraser Crane was just given the captaincy of a ship. You just – you would activate the self-destruct. Yes, that's why you need I want it. Parker Posey on screen. If Like I, I want more Parker Posey. I want more Penny. And then I like that, that they just brought in that one dude who worked with the alien – that that robot, yes. that that guy yeah. took a major role this season. Yeah, yeah, and he was cool, yeah. and he was cool he, because you. He's in yeah. Turn Up Charlie with uh, Idris Elba on Netflix. We like that show. <laughs> but uh, no, I, yeah, man, I would hate to. But do you need? You, you gotta have self. You gotta have a self destruct, bro. You got to. You got There's to. a lot. I like this one though because it's not one button. She had to do a lot of work for that self destruct. Oh man, the effort amount. You know, you gotta. You got to turn the cooling system off, man. Now, why would you need a self-destruct? Well, for example, uh, the Cassandra Crossing. Uh, that's a classic movie. And that's a movie where a bacteria breaks out. And now this train is just carrying disease across Europe, right? If they had a self-destruct, they wouldn't have to worry about, you know, trying to clear off the tracks and whatnot. They could just blow up the train. Virus gone. Bacteria gone. You know, Whoa. it's important. It's important, man. And, I mean, she blows it up. That's a massive explosion. Oh, yeah. It blows up three times. 
He <laughs> <laughs> blows up three times. Wait, is it over yet? Wait, yeah. no, there's another one. Wait, there's another one? So, did that alien want to kill her, or did it just want to stow away? Column A, column B, man. Uh, is it that smart? <laughs> it, the, 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 the average alien, you figure, is about the intelligence of a dog. The queen is, is, is people smart. The queen is people smart, and it's great because that thread runs through the uh, the first two movies anyway. You know, we, we get to the madness that is three and just number four, which made me not – I almost didn't go watch The Avengers when I saw that Joss Whedon made it because I was like, Alien Resurrection was terrible. Well, we're covering, we're covering the four, aren't we? Yeah, we could, but I rather <laughs> – <laughs> Oh, I like to just act, you know, you know that Simpsons episode, and then Poochie went to his home planet. The end. You know, like that's how I like to look at the series: Alien, Aliens, and then Poochie lives. Yeah. But uh, and anything else uh, you want to touch on? I, there's, I mean, we've left out. I have notes for days here. But is there anything, anything yeah. in the behind the scenes footage that you liked to, that you thought was cool? Anything else you want to talk about? Dude, pretty much, pretty much. I have always just been of the mind that. If after the second movie they just followed what Dark Horse Comics did, because uh, John Verheiden, that guy, he's written he's written a ton of movies that have gotten turned into Mark Verheiden, Mark Verheiden, he's written a bunch of movies that have got a, a bunch of things that have gotten turned into movies, uh, and what they did in the comics was incredible, was in, it was incredible. Hicks lives, Newt lives. They eventually end up with Ripley. The aliens take over Earth. It would have been great. Oh, wow. It would have been great. Instead, we get the depressing Alien 3. Did you? With a good turn, though, Charles S. Dutton. Did you notice? Charles S. Dutton gets ki- You know he gets killed a lot in movies for sacrificing himself? Demon yes. Knight. <laughs> He's a good Legion. guy. Legion. This uh, Alien 3. It's like, come on, Dutton. That's right. Because he's a really nice guy, you know, and he's always like, I will give my life for you because I'm Charles S. Dunn. This, this movie has the black goo that is made famous in Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Alien, Alien 3? Alien oh. 3 has the black goo? No, no, Alien, this one. I, I ah, jump okay. all over the place, man. <laughs> but sorry. so, do you, uh, I, I didn't remember the goo until I, I watched it again recently. Did you ever wonder about Where that stuff? I did not. You, I have seen Alien dozens of times. Where was the goo in Alien? It's, it's on the egg. The black goo is on the egg in Alien. There's a ton of black goo in that in that ship. Do you know when people complain about how the alien got so big? And Ash calls it the perfect specimen. Now, to get that big for the amount of... Ca- and it was screet, what it is screet in the director's cut... I kind of take that as that that there's some form of genetic goo allowing like give like a super protein. Huh. I just feel I honestly I just assume that, you know, it's just got an incredible metabolism, you know? It can survive in outer space for Christ's sake, man. We don't know what that thing is all about. Yeah. You know, it's got acid for blood. Like what kind of metabolism do you have to have for have acid for blood? Sansong P, my students taught me in Korean. Sansong P, ah, Sansong P. <laughs> they played, they played Aliens, the arcade game from 1990, and they finished it. I threw it up on my Instagram. They love. Oh, that's it. cool. They love. It. Yeah, yeah. They threw the queen out into space, man. It was How awesome. How much goo did that thing? It's, it's like, is it just, is it just gooing stuff on the wall? It, it yo, it's uh you 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 think that the aliens they act like an ant farm or a beehive man, so you know they they excrete crap through their mandibles to stick stuff up on walls like that, you know. Wow. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. It checks out. Like spiders have a lot yeah, of webbing. Comes out of their butt, you know. If Spider Man was real, you know, he would be squirting things out of his butt, <laughs> not his fingers. You know? No. Be- Norbert, I want you to do something. I want you to rank. Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, Prometheus, and Alien Covenant. I want you to rank them all. Okay. Alien and Aliens, they're one and two. And you can you can interchange. You can switch them up depending on the day of the week. It feels week. evil to put because... Aliens ahead of Alien, doesn't it? Or not evil. Exactly. It just... Yeah, that's the thing. They're two different movies. Yeah. It's not the same. This is not the same genre at all, you know? It... The action thriller genre basically is invented by aliens, 
You know, Alien is just a horror movie, sci-fi horror. So that's why, you know, if it's Monday, Alien, then Aliens. If it's Tuesday, Aliens, and then Alien. And then, oh, the rest of them just, oh. You got it. You got to do it. Sake. Oh, I mean, I guess Alien 3, the director's cut, that's on the Alien Quadrilogy box set. Because that that is a watchable movie. And it gives the prisoners some actual time to shine. You get more backstory with Charles S. Dutton. The alien is born out of an out of a whole other creature. Uh, alien Resurrection is going to be last, period, point blank. Uh, after that one, after Alien 3, director's cut, then I'd say let's go Covenant, Prometheus, Alien vs. Predator 1, Alien... Alien vs. Predator 1, Alien vs. Predator 2, and then, yeah, Resurrection, Ooh. last. I do I do yeah. like an Alien 3 when the alien reaches down from the ceiling, grabs that dude by the head, and just pulls him up into the, the ducts. That is, yo, dude, when you play Alien Isolation, that is a straight-up death. <laughs> you find yourself running down the hallway and then just snatch? Oh my god! It's the scariest thing ever, that game. I, I yeah, love that. Was... I love that moment. Great. All right. My recommendation to you, brother, I know you're not a super gamer guy. Get Alien Isolation, put some headphones on, turn off the lights, and just be prepared to wet yourself in a video game. <laughs> Sounds great. <I'm> <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yes. I mean, I, thought, I, I I think we've covered everything here, right? I mean, we've, we yes, haven't sir. covered everything because there's a lot, but this was fun, man. Thanks for recommending this. And I, I got to tell you, I had watched this movie a lot, a new Alien but I, I hadn't dove into the documentaries or the Giger documentaries or the creation of it or knowing about the oysters or the, oh, totally. the, any of that. And totally. I just think it's um, – I mean this totally. this movie just does not it, – it, it ages so it, – it ages very well. The practical effects, Those, I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, the first two, the first two movies are two of the greatest movies ever made, period, point blank. Aliens set the standard for what action movies look like, for how characters talk in movies, for how you regard creatures, you know, behavior. The director's cut with the way that they, uh, they put the, 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 the guns, the turret sentries in the, in the hallway, the tension ratcheted up, just, ugh. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, are we talking about that next? We can. All right. That sounds good. But no, thanks for joining me, man. This was a lot of fun. All right, brother. Enjoy All yourself. Right. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, and for Norbert, needs more wages, more van. This is Movies, Films, and Flicks. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Don't flick any switches. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.